Welcome to Church at Home. We're so glad that you've decided to join us today. If you're new with us, type connect in the comments or click the new here connect card so that we can connect with you. Also, take a second to share this live feed to your personal page. Today's message may change someone's life. Pastor Chris is continuing a message series called Fresh Fruit. After the message, make sure you head over to our Church at Home website. There's a discussion guide there and links where you can let us know how we can pray with you or help you meet a need. If today's message blessed you or you call Grace Home, click the Give link below so we can continue to move the gospel message of Jesus forward and reach even more people. Finally, we hope you enjoy today's worship in the message. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. I'm so glad you've decided to join us this morning. Would you take a time today with us to enter into a time of worship? You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You're working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, you're moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, you're working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. darkness my God that is who you are let's sing that again way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are here you're touching every heart I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, bending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. Sing it again, you are. 
in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time, let's sing that again. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working.
believe in the life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is the you have your way I give you my heart Lord you can have it all take every part of me and use me now move in me Lord I live for you alone only you only you Lord I give you my heart I give Hey, good morning, Grace family and all those that are joining us this morning. Maybe for your first time, we are so glad you have come online this morning or this afternoon or evening, whatever time works for your family right now. But we're just so glad that you're with us. We want to say thanks for joining 
If you're new here once again, we would love to hear about it. You can either type connect or new in the comments, or you could fill out our connect card and uh, let us know. We would love to connect with you and send you a gift for being here with us this morning at Church at Home with Grace Assembly. Hey, we want to let, uh, let us know. We need to know that you're here watching. So if you have not yet, just say something in the comments. Say good morning, everybody, or praise the Lord, or whatever it is. We would love to be able to interact with you this morning. And then also, uh, we just want to encourage you, participate with the service. Share it with a friend or, or the neighbor. Or, man, if, if you need to shout me down uh, through comments or emojis, feel Feel free to, but we're, we're believing that God's going to use this time together to encourage you and to, and to inspire you to live, live more fulfilling lives in Jesus. So do whatever you have to. We want to encourage you also after this message is over to jump on to our website, graceagpa.org slash church at home for discussion questions and things like that. This evening at 8 p.m. we're going to have a Zoom call uh, with our with any Anybody that wants to join in on that and uh, just talk about the discussion questions, what the Lord spoke to you through this morning's message and time of worship, and uh, just pray together as well. So we're looking forward to that. But uh, hey, I want to I share a story with you. Some of you know this story. Some of you experienced this story with me, but some of you haven't. And a couple years ago, we had the awesome opportunity to go on a missions trip to Florida. I know, right? Like that is not really a missions trip, it's more like a Disney trip, but honestly, we were going to partner with a, a French church and do some crazy good ministry there for a whole week, serving the people of Central Florida. And, you know, we, uh, we had all the, the planning done, we had the, uh, the fundraising taken care of, and, and all the details. We got to the airport on a Sunday afternoon, ready to take off to Florida for a week in the summer. Man, it was, it was going to be a great week. We were excited about it. We get to the check-in counter of the airport, and they notify us that our flight is being delayed. No sweat, no worry, 20 people, we're good to go, we're all here, that's all that matters, right? Well, we get to our, uh, our gate and they let us know that the, the flight has been delayed even longer because of weather and storms in Florida. And so, you know, we, we, we took a, a, a much needed break and rest from getting from the church to the airport and, and all the luggage and all that stuff and and so we let everybody grab some lunch and found a spot where we could all we could fit the whole group together in the airport and we were playing some games and different things like that and and, and sooner soon enough we hear an announcement come over um, all flights are delayed for the next few hours something like that and you know we were like oh no what are we going to do and so we start we start notifying family and friends and asking for the church to pray with us and it's, it's, it's you know it's it's kind of turning into quite the event now and and so we uh, finally get to our boarding time. Man, we're excited. We're ready to go. We get on the plane. We get seated. We were able to get 20 seats all next to each other. Praise the Lord. And, and man, it was, it was going to be a great experience getting to Florida in about two and a half hours and in the sunshine and the good weather and joining our friends in ministry. And about 30 minutes into getting on the plane, we were asked to get off the plane. Because now there was even more storms in Florida and we were not able to make a, a straight shot there and so they wanted to wait it out. All the flights had been canceled going southward. And so we got off our plane again and, and now we're in the evening time and so now kids are getting hungry and, and adults are even getting hungry and whatnot. And so we found some options for dinner and we made some checkpoints and some ideas and we started making some funny videos and trying just to pass the time along and Sooner or later, we were able to finally get on our plane. Our next plane had pulled up to the gate and ready, and so we get on the plane. We're now nearing about 10 p.m., 10.30 at this time, and we get on the plane, and uh, we get seated again, get some great seats again. We're all together, and, uh, you know, we sit there for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes goes by, and, and you know, we went through the snacks at this time, and went through our free uh, juice or, or soda at this time, and, and the pilot comes on about 11 p.m. and says, I'm so sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my, I'm, gonna be, I'm, I'm not going to be able to fly you to Florida because my co-pilot and I, are our, the, the, the terminal, the, the flight tower has told us that our hours have lapsed, and we have went over our hours for the day, we're no longer to fly, so I'm going to have to ask you to deboard the plane. 
And so as, as, we, as we waited to, to see if, if, um, if they were able to find other pilots or not, uh, sooner, uh, eventually they were told us, no, now it's time to get all the way off the plane. So we got off the plane again, and we were, we, were, we were all the way in the back of the plane. So by the time we get off the plane, there's a long line of people at the ticketing counter trying to rebook flights. By the time we get up there, there are no flights available for 22 people going to Florida for until Wednesday the, this, uh, in the next few days. So that's three days. And so we didn't know what we were going to do. And we were, uh, we, were, we were scrambling. We were trying to figure out how to get rides home and all this stuff. At that point, our good friends, Eric and Tiffany Spanier, pastors in Wilmington, Delaware, reached out to us and offered to come get us. They're only about 30 minutes away. Come get us for the night. They let us crash at their, at their church building. And man, what a, what a crazy mess that turned into. And then we ended up, by the grace of God, spending the next week in Delaware, ministering alongside Pastor Eric's church and getting to bless them and getting to bless the community there. And man, God, God used it for incredible ways. But can I let you in on a secret? About five hours into this ordeal, I lost my joy. You can ask my wife, you can ask some of the students, I became frustrated and nervous and anxious and panicked and unsure of what was going to happen. Somewhere along the line in that airport, in between getting on planes and getting off planes, reallocating to different gates or different places, I lost my joy. I hate to admit it, but it happens it happens. Maybe it's happened to you at some point. Last week, we started this series called Fresh Fruit. We're diving into looking at what the fruit of the Spirit are listed in Galatians chapter 5. Paul writes to, to the, the church in Galatia that, man, if you're living for God, if you have a relationship with Jesus, the evidence of that are these nine fruit of the Spirit. Nine things are produced in your life. It's, it's evidence, it's visible to others that God is at work in your life and in my life. Paul wrote this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let me list that out to you again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. These are the proof, this is the proof that you're following Jesus, that you've allowed him to come into your life and begin the transform, transformative work of becoming a, a follower of his teaching. The fruit of the Spirit are not optional as some people would like to think. You don't get to choose which one you'll have today or which one you'll skip tomorrow. Instead, the goal is to be so close to Jesus that we have all of the fruit operating in our life. Now let me just let you in on this secret as well. This list is believed to be uh, collected for the church that Paul is writing to here in Galatia. It's not an exhaustive list. There are many more evidences of the Holy Spirit at work in your life, but these seem to be, from what we can understand from Scripture, the primary ones that Paul focuses on time and time and time again. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So instead, uh, the goal is to have all these functioning at the same time. Why is this so important? Because when it comes to sharing the gospel, the message of hope to those who are lost and, and, and without hope, you cannot separate the message of God from the messenger of God. So it's important for us to have the fruit of the Spirit active in our life, growing and producing these fruit, so that when it comes time for us to share the message of hope with your friend, with your coworker, with your neighbor or family member, they, they, they can look at your lives and see, oh yeah, that lines up. That is what I've noticed about he or she. So these, these, these things are intertwined. You qualify or disqualify the, your message with the way you live. What you say, what you claim to believe has to be backed up. There, there must be evidence in your attitude, in your words, in your actions and reactions, and the way you treat others. Today we're coming to the second proof that you are connected and in love with Jesus and following him. It's joy, joy, joy. Say that with me, joy. 
If you grew up in church, you probably sang this song in Sunday school or kids' church. It goes like this. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I hope you sang along. I hope you have a smile on your face because I just broke out into song this morning. We're talking about joy this morning. We're talking about one, the, the fruit of the Spirit and how it's to be grown and mature in your life. Maybe you're saying, okay, that's easy. That's easy. I can do that. When everything is going well, when your flights are on time, when your kids are making good grades, when your spouse is cooking dinner for you every night, even your dog is well behaved, joy is easy to handle. Joy is easy to have. Joy is easy to access. It it seems to be natural. I can be joyful when everything is going well. But what about during a pandemic? What about in the midst of quarantine? What are we on now, like week five or six here in Pennsylvania? Or the days where your flights are canceled or where there's trouble at work or there's trouble in your marriage or when your cat and dog hate you. What about then? Do you have the joy of the Lord in your heart? What about when you're unfairly attacked? When your motives are questioned by a good friend? When you can't defend yourself? When your retirement account balance is going down instead of up? When everything you thought was secure isn't anymore. When people disappoint you and let you down. When you are betrayed. When the doctor gives you a horrible report. When you lose someone you love so close. When your whole world is rocked. When something like this happens, a bad day quickly turns into a bad week, a bad month, and even a bad year. And how do you have joy in the face of that? I want us to look at a verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this morning that talks about our attitude in the face of difficulties. Bad days, hard days, even persecution. Paul wrote this to the church in Thessalonica. Be joyful always. Let me say that again. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always. Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? You look at that saying, okay, as long as God blesses me and things are going well, I can do that. No problem. Got it. God, you do your part and I will do mine. That's how we view it at times, as a command for when things are going well. I can have joy as long as my life is all put together. But joy is, is when, it, it, joy has this, this sense of when everything is going right and I feel good fruit. That's what joy is. But when you discover the situation that the people were in that Paul is writing to here, it brings a whole new meaning. And so I just want to share a little bit about the history of this letter and the, and the direction that it was written in. 1 Thessalonians is a book or a letter written by Paul to the church in Thessalonica, Greece. The church was enduring suffering and persecution. Paul, who was routinely put in prison and beaten for his faith, called this severe suffering. If he called it severe suffering, it probably was severe suffering, if you understand what I'm saying. Paul started the church, but the church members encouraged him to leave because they were afraid that he would be killed. And as a result, the recent converts in Thessalonica had little support or leadership in the midst of this persecution that they found themselves in. They put their faith in Jesus and changed the way they lived. And now they were being hunted down, threatened, imprisoned, and persecuted for their newfound faith in Jesus. They were serving Jesus under the threat of death. Remember, these were not mature, lifelong followers of Jesus. These were brand new baby Christians. And Paul wrote this letter to give them encouragement and further instruction and God, about godly living. That's the, that's the setting of this letter. New Christians enduring persecution and opposition. The tone of this letter is more like this. Hey, I know times are tough. I know there is suffering But remember, Jesus is coming back. I wonder if that would read much the same to you and I today. Hey, child, hey, friend, hey, son, daughter, hey, believer, hey, non-believer. I know life is tough. I know you're going through a lot of junk right now. Stress, brokenness, fear, frustration, 
But Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back for you that believe in him. Jesus is coming to make things right. You aren't living for this world, but for the next world. In the meantime, though, in the meantime, live in such a way that you are different from the world around you. So what should your attitude look like in difficult times? How should a follower of Jesus Christ respond to hardship and suffering, even persecution, on bad days, on bad weeks, or even months? How should we react? Paul tells the church in Thessalonica, and he tells us, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Even in their hardship, Paul reminded them the importance of joy, a fruit of the Spirit, a result of their deep relationship with Jesus. See, cultivating this fruit of the Spirit depends on a new and I deepening our walk and our trust in who God is, practicing the fruit of the Spirit, asking God for opportunities to grow in joy, to grow in love. The enemy and even other people will fight you against your joy. To maintain your joy, it's important to understand some principles this morning. Now listen, when I, when I think of joy, I, I think of a, there, there's a couple videos I think of. One of them is this one. Watch this. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks like joy to me, and it brings me joy. It brings me joy when I watch those things. But listen, joy is much, much, much more than just a good laugh. Joy is not circumstance-based. Happiness is based on circumstances. What you have, where you are, and what, what is happening right now. Joy has nothing to do with your circumstances. See, you can have joy in spite of your circumstances. You can have joy in the darkest mornings, in the darkest nights. You can have joy when you've lost everything. You can have joy when you don't know where to turn. Challenge yourself uh, during this time, during this pandemic, to find a way to laugh in the midst of it. Your, your, uh, your life may be falling apart, uh, honestly, it may be just crumbling right now. I want to challenge you this morning to find something that causes you to laugh, that, that allows you to take your mind off of the circumstance and put your mind on who God is. See, God is, God is a God full of love and full of joy. And He wants you to experience that joy even while you're walking through pain and through trial. So I want to challenge you to find something that makes you laugh. But see, because joy can keep you laughing even when your plans are shot. Even when all you've worked for is gone in a second. Even when, even when everything you've put your trust in and your hope in and, and, and your, your, your lifelong goals in is gone, joy will keep you going. Joy will keep you ahead. But you don't know, Pastor Chris, what's going on in my life. It's a whole lot worse than a 12-hour plane De delay. I, I understand. I, I totally get it. I know there are far worse things in life, and I know right now in this season that there are really bad things happening and, and, and struggles that people are walking through. I get it. I'm there with you. But let me ask you this question. It's a question that my wife has to ask me a lot. Let me just be honest. A lot. It's this. Is your bad attitude about it making it any better? Is your bad attitude making the situation any better? The answer is, of course not. Your bad attitude makes you and everyone else around you miserable. Can I just raise my hand right now and say I'm, I'm really good at having a bad attitude? I'm really good at losing my joy when I shouldn't? You're not alone this morning. I'm standing here right with you. The Lord's challenging me in this word just as much as I hope he's challenging you. Choose to let joy shine through. Where does this joy come from, though? Where does the joy that shines through the hardest moments come from? It comes from a couple places we find in the Lord. Joy comes from knowing, first of all, that you're not alone. 
comes from knowing that you're not alone, that God is with you in the rough spots of life. When you have a, uh, we, we have a promise in Isaiah 43, verse 1. I want to read it to you from the message translation this morning. It reads this, don't be afraid, I've redeemed you. I've called your name, you're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am your God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. Now let's look at Psalm chapter 5, verse 11. But let all who take refuge, refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread, uh, spread your protection over them and that, they, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Man, that's, that's what a follower of Jesus Christ, that's why a follower of Jesus can have joy in the worst of times. He has promised to be with you. You are not alone, friend. You are not alone. In fact, often you sense his presence in the more, even more in difficult times, in those times where you feel alone, in those times where trouble is seemingly overtaking you, where worry and panic has ensued. What are you going to do? How are you going to make it happen? What's going to happen next? Is the time where the Lord wants to draw nearest to you. You sense his presence in an overwhelming fashion, and peace reigns free in your life. You go through circumstances you don't understand. You don't see a reason for it. You wonder why it's going on. And in spite of all of it, you can have joy because God sees what you cannot. God sees in the future and God sees the need for others and for what you're going through. Check this out. Your trial, your pain, your suffering, what you're walking through, your challenge isn't just about you though. It's about how God is preparing to use you. So be full of joy because God is testing you. God is, is working through you. God is working some stuff out of you during this season so that he can use you in the next season. And that should cause joy in our heart. That should cause us to be joyful on all occasions. That's why you can have joy when your finances aren't going so well. That's why you can still have joy when you face death or the loss of a loved one. That's why we can have joy in the midst of a long-term illness or a bad doctor's report. That's why you and I can have joy when we face persecution or opposition. But how do you have that joy? How do you have that joy again? Joy also comes from knowing that God will use your circumstances for his glory. Now this is where I struggle the most and maybe you do too. Kristen and I will be together, and, well, man, we have plans for something, and, or we're trying to get something done, maybe here at church, or maybe at our house, and sure enough, something's missing. Maybe it's a, it's a project at our house, and we're working on this project, and I went to Lowe's to, to go get the materials needed, and sure enough, I got the wrong thing. I, I got the wrong bolts, or I got the wrong screws, or the wrong type of paint. You get the picture. I buy a lot of wrong stuff. And Kristen has this innate ability to sense that everything is going to be okay, that everything we're going through, that everything in this project is going to work out and we're going to be able to accomplish it. But I'm over on this side of the equation. I'm freaking out a little bit. I kind of look like a chicken with my head cut off sometimes and I'm losing it. I'm anxious. I'm worried. I'm frustrated. And I have lost my joy. Are you there with me? So, some of you might just say, well, that's just Kristen's personality. Listen, I've tried to use that excuse myself to justify the missing fruit of the Spirit in my own life from time to time. But the reality is that there are, there are parts of this list, many of them, that I myself need to work on. I am not perfect in any way, and chances are neither are you. And there, there must be a desire from all of us to grow in the joy of the Lord, to grow in our sense of understanding that, hey, God has this. God's going to use this circumstance for his good. Joy comes from knowing that God is still working even when we can't see it. 
It's like that song we sang this morning, Waymaker. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He's for you. And I want to just tell you today, take a second here this morning and just say, hey, whatever you're walking through today, whether you saw it coming or it's blindsided you, God is for you. Look at that promise in Isaiah 43. He is for you. Even when you walk through the rough places, he's with you. Even when you walk through the rough water, it will not overtake you because my God and your God loves you and he's for you this morning. Trust in him, lean on him, and find your joy in his plan because it's much better than our plan. He has a plan and he's working it through you this morning. He can and he will use your worst moments, your worst moments for his glory. Joy also comes from a long-term perspective. Consider the example of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 describes an incomprehensible joy, a joy that we cannot even fathom, a joy that I, I don't even understand. It reads this, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What joy, what what gave Jesus joy so much, so much that he had the strength enough to endure pain and agony on the cross? I believe that the joy that Jesus found in that moment was the joy and the opportunity he saw to set you free. For you to have the gift of grace and the freedom and wisdom and joy. The joy of purchasing your salvation and mine. The joy of making a way for you to go to heaven. That was the joy that Jesus found. That was a long-term perspective he had. It enabled him to see beyond the pain of the cross. Jesus endured the cross for the joy of making a way for you and for me. You can endure the challenges of this life with joy because you know he is ahead of you waiting for you. There is nothing that you're walking through. There's nothing too small or nothing too big that he has not already endured himself. For he who knew no sin became sin for us. He, 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 he took on everything we've ever had to walk through and everything we will ever have to walk through. And he found joy in doing it for us. He can relate to you in the midst of your trouble, and he gives you, he has the ability to bring you to a place of finding joy in the midst of your circumstances. So you can have joy in the most difficult places because you aren't living for this life. As a believer in Jesus, we're living for the next life. This is just temporary citizenship. It's not a permanent place of residence. Earth may not go the way you ex- expected it to go, but you aren't going to be on earth any, uh, for, for very long anyway. Heaven is your home, and joy comes from an eternal perspective. I can ride through this life. I can endure what I have to in this life because I know there's a place that I'm going where there's no more tears and there's no more pain. There's no more hardship and there's no more frustration. There's no more anxiety because I will, I will be in the presence of an almighty God and I will be with Jesus forevermore. People around, uh, uh, joy comes from having that eternal perspective. Maybe you're asking this morning, Why be joyful? Why pray? Why be thankful? Because it's what God's will is for your life, Paul says. But how can that be God's will? What can that possibly accomplish? Why not gripe and complain and whine and get angry? After all, you didn't deserve this life. You didn't deserve what you're going through right now. What could God be thinking? People around you are watching. I believe the purpose of us choosing joy in the midst of hardship is because it leads people to Jesus. It leads people to an understanding that I'm not getting myself through this. I'm not able to get myself out of this mess, but it is Jesus and the joy that I find in him that brings me through it. See, people are watching us, your family, your coworkers, your friends or your neighbors or maybe it's students in your school, they hear us talk about our faith and your trust in in God and, and the ways we serve Him in our church. But they are watching 
and they are waiting. Anyone can have joy in the good times. Anyone can pray and be thankful when everything is going their way. But they are watching and they're waiting. See, they want to know if your faith and if my faith will stand up in the difficult times too. Is your God big enough and your commitment strong enough to carry you when everything around you is falling apart? Do you have a rock that you can stand on in your God? Or is yours a convenient, when it's all going well, faith? Your faith in your relationship with Jesus, your trust in Him is best demonstrated in hard times. Hard times are the proving ground for a commitment to following Jesus. Your testimony is proven when it's tested. Your testimony is proven when it's tested. And the fruit of the Spirit shines brightest in the darkest of times. So I want to encourage you this morning, if you're struggling to have joy in this season, put your trust and your hope in God. Have an eternal perspective. Have a perspective that, that you're not alone in the midst of this. And it's not circumstance-based. It's, 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 it's beyond our circumstances. It's because of the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope you have joy this morning. But maybe you're watching this for the first time you've joined us, and, or maybe you've been watching for several weeks now, and you've never placed your hope and your life into the hands of Jesus. You've never surrendered everything you have and invited him in to have a relationship with you. I'm believing that this morning the Holy Spirit is speaking to your life right now. He's speaking to your heart right now. And he's saying, I, I, could, I could give you that joy. I can give you joy in the midst of your hardship. I can allow you to experience the love like you've never experienced before. All you have to do is let Jesus into your life. So if you're watching this morning and you would be interested in, in, in praying that and asking that God would come into your life, uh, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. All you have to do is repeat it after me. and Man, we, we, we would be honored and privileged to be able to join with you in this journey and help you experience the joy that can only be found in God. So won't you bow your heads with me right now as we pray this prayer. Jesus, I come to you this morning. And I admit that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And God, I, I need joy in my life. So Jesus, I come to you this morning. I believe that you died on a cross for my sin. And I believe that you have the power to forgive me of that sin. I believe that you were buried and you were raised to life. And I believe that you want to have a relationship with me now. So Jesus, I invite you into my life. Would you have your way? I give you everything I have and I receive everything you have for me. I commit to following you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer, we are so excited. We are so thrilled. It's the best decision you would ever make. And uh, man, we would love to connect with you on this journey. So if you just prayed that prayer and asked Jesus to come into your life, if you'll do us the honor of, of uh, you can put that in the comments, hey, new or Jesus or whatever you want to, or you can click the link, I just gave my life to Jesus, and it's a little card you'd fill out digitally, sends us an email, and we would love to, to, to email you back, connect with you, and, and see how we could help you on this journey. We are so excited for what God's doing in your life. We hope you experience the joy of the Holy Spirit, even in the midst of a pandemic. Hey, if you're watching with us and you've been a part of the Grace family, man, you know what to do next. You need to jump over to our Church at Home page, 
Click on that discussion guide and break open the discussion with your family and friends. And uh, we hope that the Lord is challenging you in your joy today. We hope that maybe there's circumstances that are pressing and troubling right now, but that you would be growing in joy, that even in the midst of the worst of times, you would be able to experience God's presence in its best way possible. Hey, we want to invite you also to join us once again this evening at 8 p.m. on Zoom. You can find the details in our Facebook group. And uh, it's going to be a great time. We'll go through the de- discussion questions together and just have a great time of conversation and prayer. We're so glad you joined us this morning here at Church at Home. We hope that you have a blessed rest of your Sunday and experience God's joy through the rest of this week.